Hello everybody, my name's Nafi. I'm a second year medical student studying at the University of Leeds and today I'm going to do an in-depth look at what year two medicine looks like at Leeds Medical School. Now if you haven't already done so, if you are interested in watching this video, you probably want to know what happens in your first year. So I'll leave a link to that somewhere either side here because I will be referring to some of the things in that original video. Another disclaimer is that the majority of my teaching has been online and you may be watching this video when there is in-person teaching. So I'm going to try and accommodate for that in this video as well. Generally speaking, year two is pretty much year one again, but with more content and a little bit more complexity. Traditionally, year one and two of medicine is pre-clinical and the big clinical shift happens in your third year. However, in the second year of Leeds Medicine, there is a little bit more of a clinical focus than in your first year. Firstly, we start off with EMS, which is Extended Medical Sciences. And this is very similar to the module you do in your first year of Leeds called IMS, or Introduction to Medical Sciences. In this module, you basically go through all of the different fundamental science knowledge that you need to know for the rest of your medical career. This module is split into five different themes and it's taught over the span of your first term. And the themes are Introduction to Pathology, Genetic and Environmental Cause of Disease, Inflammation, Infection and Immunology, Disorders of Metabolism and Neoplasia. Within this, you are taught in a variety of different methods. So lectures, tutorials, symposia, etc. Usually you will have three to six lectures per week as well as one or two tutorials. This changes depending on what particular theme you are currently on. At the end of each theme, you will have a progress test or a knowledge test, which will be to make sure that you are keeping up with all of your education to a satisfactory level. Now, currently online, it is done through crosswords and you submit these crosswords online and they're done open book. However, if you are in person, these could be more formal tests, which are multiple choice and you just answer them. You have to get around about 65% to pass. However, that changes year on year. I said earlier that this module lasts for only one term and that's because it gets replaced in terms two and three by the next one. CP or clinical pathology is basically EMS once again, but the science that you're being taught is very, very shifted towards the clinical side hence clinical pathology. Now, there are a lot of different themes within clinical pathology. I think off the top of my head, there are 14. I'll list them all on screen now. There is a lot of them, and this is what's gonna be taking the bulk of your time, or one part which will be taking the bulk of your time in your second year. There's a lot of stuff. It's very complicated. It's taught much in the same way as EMS is, so lectures, tutorials, symposia, and it has roughly the same time frame. And at the end of each of the themes, you once again have these progress tests, knowledge tests, crosswords for me, but they could be in-person multiple choice exams for you. Next is C and M, which is control and movement. This is the anatomy portion of your year, and it's split into two parts. The first is movement even though control and movement starts with control and then movement, you start with movement first, which is a little bit weird, but never mind. Movement is where you focus on the anatomy of your upper limbs and your lower limbs. My legs aren't on camera. And you learn a lot of stuff in this particular module. You learn the upper and lower limbs in your first term and then you move on to control later. You'll learn pretty much everything you need to know about the limbs, but it roughly falls into the structure of learning about the bones, learning about the muscles, learning about the vascu vasculature, vasculature, and then learning about the innovation and then the actions that all of these muscles and components do together. In terms two and three, you focus on the control part. And this is basically your neuroanatomy. You learn everything about the brain 
and the spinal cord. You learn all the parts of the brain, what each part does. You learn all the pathways in your nervous system. There's a lot of stuff in this neuroanatomy bit. Basically, there's a stereotype that if people want to do really, really well in medicine, the most knowledgeable ones are the neurologists or the neurosurgeons. And currently, at my level right now, I can see why. Neuroanatomy is very difficult. There is a lot of stuff to get round your head. And even though in the year two teaching, you don't learn everything, it's still very difficult the amount that you do actually have to learn. You get taught through a series of lectures and tutorials. Normally, if things were in person, you'd be going into the dissection room and handling all of the specimens, looking at all of the bits, and actually seeing it all for yourself with your own eyes. However, if you're looking at this online, what Leeds has done is that they have formed live streams into the dissection room and you have people in there with their lab coats on and they'll be guiding you through whatever part of anatomy that they are going to teach you. As well as learning anatomy, you also have clinical lectures alongside where you look at specific conditions or specific traits and how they are related to whatever part of the anatomy that you're learning and how you would deal with them in a clinical or medical setting. Now moving on to CARES, and this is effectively the clinical bit of your year two education. All of the clinical placements, all of the clinical teaching falls into this one module. The main thing that you'll have is placements, both in primary and secondary care settings, so GPs or hospitals. And you will be with doctors and they will be guiding you through a variety of different things that clinicians do on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, some notable things include history taking and different aspects of histories. You have different physical examinations, learning how to do, say, a gastro examination or a peripheral nervous system examination. You have improving communication by talking to people from the patient carer community, something which is unique to Leeds and something Leeds values quite heavily. You also have the A to E assessment, which we'll learn in your secondary care settings. And once again, in your secondary care settings, you will learn about the S bar handover and how to do one. Similarly to control and movement, you will also have clinical lectures looking at a variety of different clinical things, but these are much rarer and much more interspersed throughout the year. Moving on to ideals, and this is something I'm not gonna spend much time on because it is next to identical as what you would do in your first year. So you're still in groups as your first year. It's actually the same groups that you're with, with your same tutor, and you'll be going through all the different aspects of innovation, development, enterprise, leadership, etc. You will have very few lectures within the year of actual content that you need to take in. The majority of your teaching is done through these group teachings or group conversations that you have every Friday or every other Friday. The big things that you actually have to do in this module is a lot of presentations and some essays and some reflective exercises, as well as interviews with your tutor, just to make sure that you are getting along and developing in the way that the medical school expects of you. Now, moving on to individuals and populations too. And this is very similar to what happens last year, looking at the social side of things, looking at the public health side of things, it is very similar. For this module, there are actually five themes that you'll have to go through, and they are health improvement, epidemiology and evidence-based learning, adopting public health values, health protection, and organization of health services. You are taught in pretty much the standard way using lectures and tutorials, but you will also come across e-learning, whether you're doing this online or not. I'm not sure what things will be like in the future. And e-learning is effectively where you're sent a presentation or an online resource with a variety of different tasks to do related to the theme that you're currently on. And doing this will feed back into the tutorials that you have to do, and then you will learn that way. After each theme, you will have to do some form of examination or assignment to prove that you've taken something in. So it could be a simple multiple choice exam, or it could be an essay or a presentation or some other form of assignment. Now, the last module I'm gonna cover is RES. 
and the reason I'm covering this last is because apparently I've heard that this will no longer be a thing after my year of teaching. However, I'm not entirely sure on that, so I will briefly touch upon it. Res is basically where you learn all of the research skills, research methods, and how to interpret research. Leeds Medical School is known for its research focus, and ma the majority of that comes from this module when you're in medical school. There's a lot of research related things that you have to do. There's a lot of maths, there's a lot of stats, there's a lot of interpretation, there's a lot. If you're a fan of maths, you'll like this. If you're not, then I'm sorry. You get taught in your first term through lectures and a few tutorials, but the big way that they try and assess you in this module is through projects. And the biggest one that you'll have to do is a two week project before your Christmas holidays where you choose or you'll be assigned a particular topic and you'll have to go away, do a bit of research and do a formal write up and then a presentation on your chosen subject. As someone who really likes their research and their logic and their maths, this was one of my favorite modules, but I'm assuming that because the majority of people in medicine aren't like me, they were probably getting a lot of negative feedback from this and thought it was best to scrap it and teach research methods in some other way. The last thing I'm gonna talk about is the end of year exams. And in Leeds, you have effectively three exams in the entirety of your time in second year. The first will be a formative exam that you will do sometime in May. And formative means it doesn't actually count towards your final grade. It's more for you to basically understand where you're at and where you need to focus on with your teaching. So this happens in around May and it's two or three hours long. Usually it would be done sitting in an examination hall, but for me it is currently online. And then in June, you will have two exams which will be summative, meaning they will go to your actual final grade and they will cover everything that you have learnt throughout your year. So, gotta do a lot of studying for that. These exams will be around three hours and about 160 multiple choice questions each, which is a lot, but you know, they've got to have some rigor somewhere. And that's it, this is the end of the video. I have talked about, I think, everything that happens in the second year of medical school at Leeds. I hope you found this video useful. If you're watching this because you want to go to Leeds, then I hope you get into Leeds. If you're watching this as a first year, then, well, you'll have all of these things to look forward to and totally not cry about. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.